Hello and welcome to the Moncast, where we compare Pokemon and Digimon. I'm Evie, and as always, I'm joined by Quinn. Hi. And May. Hello. Yay. We're all here. And queer. That too. The current score is 10-1 to Digimon, and this time we'll be discussing the 12th episodes, The Low Tad Lowdown, and Divided They Stand. We recommend watching the episodes before you listen any further, but you do you. And a big thank you to our fantastic patrons for supporting the show. If you join them, you'll gain early access to the uncut versions, a week ahead of the edited versions. So let's begin with the low tad lowdown. So, do you love low tad as much as I do? I like uh, Ludicolo, but I only like Ludicolo because of uh, the uh, Detective Pikachu movie. Because true, my my partner and I would just start screaming uh, Ludicolo at each other for like the few months after we saw that movie. And uh, yeah, so. Uh, Ludicolo found a uh, a place in my heart after watching that movie, so uh, I, I like Lotad uh, more than I originally did because he evolves into Ludicolo, and uh, I, I love him. I love how dopey they are. Yeah. Yeah. The eyes are just so vacant. I love him. Very cute, very small. I like the odd Lotad as well that Brock ends up keeping. Yeah. Which is, um, de- it's definitely not a rock type. Who can use water gun for reasons? Yeah, but, I mean, Water, water Gun can be taught to Lotad, but it's like an egg move, isn't it? Anyway, they made a point of saying, oh yeah, these Lotad can, can do Water Gun because the plot demands it. And then we got into a weirdly, like, meta-technical thing about fairies in Pokemon in Advance, which is wild. Yeah, sometimes they just like to introduce, like, mechanics from the games in an episode and go over them. Hi, let's explain the game mechanics to you. I like that. I really like it when they reference like um, somewhat a character in the games or like a mechanic in the games. Like I'm, I'm a big fan for that just because I really like the games. Like it's how I uh, basically um, consume Pokemon related media is through the games. And even as a kid, I was more into the games. Like I think I watched a few episodes of the anime as a kid, but I was really into the actual games of it, not so much the the show. So I really appreciate when they have something in common with the games. And it's just a nice bit of world building as well. To be like, not everyone's a Pokemon master. Some people just farm berries. I I briefly thought that Ash was maybe going to learn a lesson about about being, or not Ash, that Brock was going to learn a lesson about not being a misogynist. But uh, no, no. We can't have actual character growth, but we can have Brock be made very uncomfortable by being treated the way that he treats women. That in another in a in a better person would have prompted some introspection, like uh, that episode of Johnny Bravo. Oh yeah, yeah, where um J- Johnny is is has to has to like um experience what women experience and then becomes like a feminist because they get a musical number about feminism. Yeah, which is just like wow, I did not expect this. Called girls are smart. <laughs> it's pretty great. He gets objectified and realizes that that's a bad thing. And then you know it's it's Johnny Bravo, so he doesn't learn anything really forever, but it's good stuff. Even if Brock didn't learn a lesson, I am glad that he was tortured a bit. Because he deserves it. Yeah, oh yeah. Brock, Brock deserves much worse than he gets. In order to learn a lesson, you kind of have to, like, make it stick. And they kind of want to continue this trope of just Brock being creepy, I guess. So they can't have him learn that lesson. Oh yeah, no, they had no intention of changing anything. And that's that's part of what makes me, like, I liked most of this episode. But that aspect of it is just like, oh, yeah, no, you... You are not unaware that this is really creepy. You just don't care. Oh, well. Uh, what was it going to say? Lotad is the best. Yeah, we've covered that. Lotad pouring water from the lily pads is so cute. Yeah. So just march in line and they all have water on the backs and I squeed. It was adorable. Oh, it is, it is very adorable. Like, I, I, I like I like the whole everything to do with Lotad in this episode, to be honest. Like, it was very... Like, I didn't really uh, previously expect Lotad to be a Digimon I would classify as... Or not Digimon, Pokemon. He also would be a great design for a Digimon, let's be real. But no, he is a Pokemon. I know, he's not really a Pokemon that I would have previously said, oh, that's a cute Pokemon. Uh, but now I'm just very like, oh, yes. No, he... he Lotad, they, 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 they are very cute. And, and I like that. But uh, I guess... My main, like, confusion was, like, I thought Brock catches rock Pokemon, so it was kind of nice to have him have something that's... Yeah, Brock is finally moving on. 
Brock caught a Zubat in like episode 7 or something. He doesn't only catch rock. Yeah, but at least it just exists only in caves. But Lotad uh, is grass water, which are both strong against rock. Yeah, so it's good for him to switch to. So like it can kill all of his uh, Pokemon. I mean, Brock doesn't want to do that. That would be bad. He could. So could Ash. It's true, although this thing is weirdly strong considering its water gun can destroy a boat. I think it might just be using Hydro Pump. Maybe. Maybe? I don't know. Either way, that's really a move I don't think they can learn. Because this Lotad seemed to actually have a personality, which, by the way, now that he's captured, Pokemon eventually just lose their personalities. Yeah, his personality now will just be Lotad. Yeah. Yeah, remember when, what was it, Chikorita was, you know, attitude problems? Ch- no, Chikorita wanted to bang Ash. Yeah, and she kept that all the way through. Yeah, she evolved into Bayleaf, and she still wanted to bang Ash, but she was bigger this time. Fair enough. Well, you know, I bet there's a lot of people really upset that that wasn't Charizard's arc. I'm so upset that, that Charizard's not still hanging out. Yeah, yeah, Charizard was, I don't know, kind of cool, if only because Ash failed at something he cared about. Well, Ash keeps on giving up his strongest Pokemon, and that always annoyed me. Yeah, yeah, it's because Ash is not a very good trainer. It does bother me when that happens, but it's not happened yet, because he's still got to build the team before he can tear it apart for no reason. But this episode, yes. I got nothing about this episode. It's it's kind of boring, except for like the Pokemon that are cute. It was a lot of fun. I liked Pikachu surfing on Lotad while Lotad's like a speedboat. That's, that was just cool, and it was fun. And Team Rocket were just magnificent, as always. Yeah, they were, they were good. They were very millennial. But that's like every Pokemon episode. Like, Team Rocket um, is great, amazing, best part of the episode, or like a highlight of the episode. Brock is Pikachu! But something cute happened. Like, I feel like that sums up a lot of uh, episodes of Pokemon. I feel like Brock was only Pikachu! for his usual intro spiel, and then was pretty much ten times better than usual. Well, then then we had to humanize him and also call him a breeder a bunch, which just feels uh, just uh. increasingly not okay the more times they do it. A Pokemon breeder. That's it. That's not helping. I like when they talk about their own objectives and goals, because it makes them feel like actual people. It was just... I don't think we're doing phrasing anymore, but someone probably should have. We never did phrasing. Well, we're doing phrasing now because breeder, yikes. No. He wants to be the best breeder. Like no one ever was. Do either of you have anything else to say about this episode? We could talk about Lotad some more. Lotad was pretty good. I love Lotad. I love Lotad. The little Lotad being cute and then being scared for a minute for no reason was probably the highlight. I like the episode title name. Pokemon's got pretty good episode title names. I am grateful that they made a, a, uh, a Tad joke. Thank you, James. Did they? I completely missed it. Yeah. D- during the, the Team Rocket uh, intro spiel. James being over dramatic when he was dehydrated. And just be like, I'm dead. Go on without me. That was the best. They're very good. I also liked Meow's like, fantasy about pleasing the boss of yeah. Team Rocket. Also phrasing? No, we're not doing that. It's Archer's joke. We're not taking it. Even if Archer's not using it anymore, we're not taking the joke. So, was this filler or not filler? So, vi- well, I guess it wasn't filler, it just really felt like it. Brock caught a Pokemon. Kinda. Well, it depends. Will Lotad ever be seen again? Because I feel like Ash has caught a lot of Pokemon that were never seen again. Yeah, but he always gets, like, a set for the region, and I assume this will be Brock's, like, third Pokemon for this region. Yeah, I mean, we've seen Fortress a lot, and Fortress was caught, like, Last season, I think? Yeah, well, okay, I'll be willing to say that this is not filler then. Catches are, like, the only thing that makes Pokemon episodes not filler, apart from, like, gym badges. God, I wish we could get to a town again. Has Ash had any gym badges yet from this region? Nope. They've not made it to Rustboro. Oh, right. Yeah, no, we're we're still on the road to Rustboro City. Oh my gosh. Still on the road. We made some friends along the way. Well, I really like this episode, just because Brock wasn't, like, entirely bad. Oh, yeah. He was bad for, like, the usual minute, but then he redeemed himself for the rest of it. That's a low bar, I gotta tell you. That is a very low bar. It's a low tad low bar. Uh-huh. Uh, it's a tad low. I tried. Tad low. It's a tad low. I guess that's all we have to say on Pokemon. This will be a quick one. <laughs> Let's move on to Divided They Stand. 
Can I please point out uh, that this episode title, it has been previously almost used once in Zero Two with United They Stand. Uh, it's not to the same level as having episode titles for like multiple seasons be something along the lines of the d- the darkness before dawn because we get that like I'm pretty sure we had it like three times in Frontier. We've had it once in Cross Wars. Uh, we get it in Zero Two. It's in like a very large amount of seasons. I'm just waiting for the advent- the adventure colon English dub to have the episode title too because it's in like a weird number of seasons. It's just it's just a thing. There there are some variations on it, but they're all terrible. Like the next episode we got for colon, it's like the Hikari before the darkness or something. No, no, it's the, the Hikari of dawn. Ah, that's close enough, right? That just means the light of dawn. Yeah, but it's not like um, it's not the play on the same. It, it's, it's not the it, the uh the idiom uh variation. It's not like a, a reference to that idiom. But that will be the dub. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. I'm I'm like hedging so I'm, I'm so hedging bets on like that episode of uh, being just cool having that same variation. How many of these episodes will have that? <laughs> is the real bet? We've probably spent longer on that title than we spent on all of Pokemon. Yeah, I'm not. I'm just saying that like uh, Digimon like to reuse their idioms in uh, episode titles. Just too much. I think it's better than Shakespeare. The Shakespeare titles have been boring. <laughs> yeah, Shakespeare was so bad at naming things. No, but like, yeah, you're right. A lot, especially Tamers in particular, has a lot of um, Shakespeare names. Like, uh, much to do about Musiamon. Uh, the Icemon cometh wasn't Shakespeare, but was pretty terrible. Anyway, so titles. Titles are out of the way. Uh, this episode. Ryuki has feels. It's good stuff. Rika and Renamon, both edgy. There is a lot of edge. Renamon, at least, has, like, some good points. I, I actually hate that I, how much I agree with um, Impmon in this episode, that humans are pretty terrible. Yeah, that's fair. So maybe we could maybe we could try stop, you know, to, to steal from the X-Men. Have you tried not being terrible? I think, really, children are terrible. Yeah, but children are made by humans, and children evolve into humans, so... On average, humans are responsible for creating humans. Like, that was my favourite thing in Digimon Savers, how Yggdrasil was just like, you know, humans are pretty terrible, I'm gonna kill them all. You know, like, I'm just saying, is there any reason he can't be the protagonist? Terrible people grow up with terrible children, but not all terrible children become terrible people. Oh yeah, but, you know, there's a ratio. I don't know what I'm saying. You're not good at this, Evie, I gotta tell you. On average, more children are terrible. <laughs> a cab, all children are bad. Wow. Yeah, I like that. <laughs> I like the way that they write Kazu and Kenta's dialogue, just be lots of hmm, hmm, hmm. Kazu and Kenta come off pretty weird in this episode, and I'm glad they don't actually matter. Also, I love Jury. Jury, so good. I want to give her hugs. Oh, Jury's always good. Jury is good. She really is. Uh, just her hugging Gielmon. Yeah. Oh. She's precious. It's so precious. I love it. Yeah. Also, it shows that, like, in, in the end, Juri is just so much braver than Kazu and Kenta. Like, because Kazu and Kenta, like, their instinct was to just run off. Juri was just like, oh my gosh, you're adorable. I'm going to hug you. And then I'm just, later on, I'm just going to put a sticker on your face. Yeah. She's so good. Like, even Takata was terrified of Gilmon, but she's just like, you know what? You're pretty cute. Cute dragon. You know what? He already called her a friend. It's fine. Again, we get to have a Digimon interacting with someone who's not their human part, like someone else, and especially that it's not another chosen child is just, it's kind of cool. I mean, Jerry gets a partner later, so she kind of is one of the chosen children, but we do get Renamon and Impmon talking. She kind of forced Leomon to be her partner, like, she just sort of ran around saying, you're my partner. Like, so, if she wasn't a chosen child, he was just a chosen Digimon. Yeah, I think this whole season you can just say that you're a chosen child, and the universe will just give you a Digivice. I mean, yeah, that's that's pretty much canon, because if you just wish on a card hard enough. Yeah, which Kazu and Kenta just randomly got Digimon. Yeah, yeah, for no good reason. Kenta just sort of received his, and it's just a fully evolved Digimon that can't talk, but is very strong and very cute, and also a water Digimon. She's a fish. Ruki joins the, the Digimon Punching Club today. It's pretty great. Which is fair. Like, she and Masaru are founding members. Actually, she joined the Digimon Stabbing Club. She did, in fact, join the Digimon Stabbing Club, but she's the only one metal enough to be in that club, so... <laughs> we don't actually have that many times, like, an, uh, the human child has, tri- has actually tried to fight the... He has even tried, so much less kind of succeeded. 
And, and also, again, we have um, armor evolutions of the original Chosen showing up. Is it Gatamon and Love? Uh, I think it's no, I think it's Hawkmon and Light. If I've just like inverted it, I'll be sad. Didn't the yeah, I'm fairly certain it's Hawkmon and, and Light. Yeah, it's Hawkmon and Light. So I, I got like the wrong partner and the wrong egg. I like swapped them around. <laughs> Yeah, at the start of the episode, Fly Beamon show up, which is also another armor evolution. It's that it's also Hawkmon. It's Hawkmon and the Digi Egg of Knowledge. Ah, cool. So that's Fly Beamon. So I don't know. I, I just really like when we get the armor evolutions of the Zero Two Chosen, like the alternate ones, to show up in in the show. And I know it happens a lot in Tamers, and it's happening a lot in uh, Adventure Colon as well. Fly Beamon's such a cool design. Yeah. I think a lot of the uh, the ones with the Diddy of Knowledge are pretty cool. Like, they all look like that, sort of. Like, they're all buggy. Armored bugs. It's very cool. Digimon are cool. And cute. I like Butterflymon, which is um, Tailmon with the Diddy Egg of Knowledge, though. Which is from the CD drama. Ah. Because it also just looks... Like, it's a great design because it actually looks like Tailmon. Like, it has Tailmon's ears... And on the paws, it has Talon's design of paws. So, like, it's definitely one of the alternate evolutions that still look like the Digimon that they came from. Like, some of them are completely random. Like, there's that the one that's a fish. Patamon with crest of uh, with egg of light, I think. It's just a fish. It's a uh, Patamon with light, yeah. Manbomon. Which just feels like trolling the Takari shippers, but yeah, but it looks nothing like um like either Patamon or really even the Digimental of Light. No, it's such a weird design. And then we have like Toucanmon, who is Hawkmon and Kindness. But Toucanmon's great. I think uh, Vmon and the Digimental of Love is pretty cool because it's just like it looks like Holsimon, but edgy. Anyway, I'm a big fan of when the alternate. Armor Revolutions show up in the show because they've got some pretty cool designs. Gosh, I hope that Colin actually does something with that, and I don't know that I think they will, but I would like it if they did. But yeah, we can talk about that in, like, 11 and a half hours, is it now? Something like that. So, this is also the episode where Yamaki starts stalking the kids and harassing them, and it's wrong. I dislike it. Yeah, it gets, like, creepier like each year that I think about this. I'm like, wow, Yamaki sure is creepy, just randomly stalking kids, like, and also, how do these kids not try to call the police on him? Henry starts running around after him, like, all day. Like, it's bright when he starts chasing him, and then it's dark when he gets back. It's <laughs> just like, ah, I've asked him. How long was Henry running? Sometimes my notes are dumb, and I just read lines like, Rika hates potatoes as much as she hates Digimon. Oh, so she doesn't hate potatoes. She really likes potatoes, but she's Cinderella with potatoes. She's partners with the potatoes. Mm, same. Oh yeah, and Rika's grandma just continues to prove that she is fantastic. Yeah, she deserves to be, like, either an original Chosen that's sort of, like, planeswalked from the adventure universe, or, like, at least um, a Chosen child in some capacity. Well, a Chosen non-child, I guess. Maybe she would have Gotsumon or something. You know what? I do have something very important to add about this episode, which is that Ruki's school outfit is pretty great. (laughs) Haven't we seen it, like, multiple times already? Well, I haven't watched the show in months. And now I remember that it was pretty great. Yeah. Fair. We need to get into, into the flow of recording weekly, so that we, this doesn't happen. Do any of the characters other than Ruki really have different outfits? Because I don't think we've seen Takato in any other outfit, have we? I think John has at least a, one other. Chuchao, I think, changes at least once, but it's pretty uncommon. And Ruki, I think, has the record at, at three or four. If we count the the new shirt at the end. But she also had the really dope goth outfit from the episode she met Venom on. That was sick. Weren't any flashbacks. That was good. I'm glad they're done with those. And now Rika and Venom can actually just, you know, talk to each other. I, I, I actually thought this was a good episode with, you know, Venom on just go, actively considering just giving up on Ruki as a partner. And that's not a thing we have ever seen before or since of someone considering, um, and not, and not, I guess Impmon has already done that, which is nice, but we don't ever see a main character's partner just consider telling you to go Pikachu yourself. Sorry. I have to edit these. I've been keeping it significantly less this episode. I'm trying. Yeah, this has happened since. You forget Joe and Govamon in Try. Govamon just leaves because Joe doesn't want it. Yeah, like, Renamon was considering just not coming back, which is pretty cool. Just go live with Impmon or something. This episode overall, like, I just really appreciated that it's growing on something that 
this season of Play Wish shown about how Ruki came from starting as like Digimon are just tools and then she kind of got freaked out about being basically kidnapped and then was kind of just said she hated Digimon altogether and then it's resolved after like several episodes. It's not like resolved in one or two episodes. It's actually resolved over time. We also get to see like Impmon having a character, which is he is a chosen child's Digimon, but you don't know that at this point. So he's just sort of a random Digimon that's showing up. We actually get him to have a backstory as well. So it's not just we get the quote unquote character of the episode who gets the focus, which is Ruki and Renamon. You also get other bits like uh, Impmon having a character as well. And it's it's something that the show will continue to grow on. And even Ruki and Renamon, their 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 relationship isn't done like with this episode. This isn't like okay, that's all the character development we're getting. They will get more as someone who has seen the rest of the season. They will get more of a um a character, and they will continue to develop. You know, like real people, their character development isn't just one and done. Oh, they're perfect people now. It in episode twelve, they're fine. It's just an ongoing thing. Yeah, it is. It is Digimon's first real earnest attempt at having a, a meaningful story uh, exist over a, you know a serialized period. Because the closest we got was Killing the Dark Masters, which even then pretty much all happened in you know one or two episodes each. Yeah, so overall, yeah, this episode's pretty good. It's solid. It it really pays off an arc they started earlier, and that's always nice. But it's something that we don't often see in Digimon that they uh that they have a, a character arc that. Unless it's Tai Chi who gets like a character arc, it's not often that characters get to keep their character arcs. Like this was even referenced in an episode where Rookie and Renamon didn't really show up, which was last episode. So well done, Digimon. I wish you'd do this more, but I think this is like one of the only times you've actually done it. Uh, you know, I'm not sure we will ever have emotional stakes this high again. I mean, yeah, eventually we get to we need to save the world and and some, we need to save Rookie, which is nice. But do you mean Jerry? I know what I mean, yes. Uh, but on, a, on the level of like a very personal, relatable problem of do I continue to be friends with this person, Digimon just isn't ever going to try and come back to that again. Which is a shame, because that's kind of neat. I, I almost wish that like Impmon had just come to the conclusion and not been terrible, that sometimes humans are pretty terrible. So I'm going to stay away from them. I mean, I guess as a human, you can kind of know, okay, people can grow and people can make mistakes. But if you think of it from... A perspective of of a pet, for example, like if if a puppy is if if a puppy is abused, uh, the puppy will grow up to hate all humans because puppy was abused, and you know you can train a puppy out of that pretty quickly. Like I, I've seen a dog who was clearly abused, and then the next week she was kissing everyone's faces, like she was just going crazy she went, because she'd learned. Oh my god, people can be good, but I always think of uh, that Digimon the same way that they are just like if dogs had magic powers and could talk because they're they're they're, they're smart but they're not like you know geniuses they don't know everything but Impmon is basically a puppy that has been abused so has basically become someone who thinks that all humans are like that you can train that over Digimon too so yeah I'm I I actually like how Impmon sort of I, I don't know. Impmon to me has been very dog-like, even though he's an imp, it's in the name, he's imp in name and nature, but I don't know, I always think that, like, yep, he, he is dog, he is puppy, he is grumpy little puppy, and I love him, I will protect. There's some good characters in Tamers. He also evolves to be hot, like, come on. Spoilers for this, like, 20-year-old show. Yeah, I'm assuming if someone's listening, they've probably seen Tamers. I'd hope so. Unless, they, unless they're just, like, if they're just Pokemon fans, and they are just kind of just experiencing Digimon for the first time, in which case, whoops, I'm sorry. Yeah, if you listen and you're just a Pokemon fan and not a Digimon fan, please let me know, because I'm not sure you actually exist. It would be interesting, though. I hope one of the listeners is like that. That'd be cool. So, was this episode filler or not filler? Not filler. Very much not. Definitely not filler. I guess we'll get on to the end, then. Now it's time for Mono A Mono, where we attempt to compare these episodes by arguing with each other over trivial things. So, any, like, comparisons? I feel like Ruki could punch Brock in the face and that'd be great. Ruki should stab Brock in the back. I see, I see, so we're not liking Brock. No. Who's worse, Brock or Yamaki? Uh... Oh, Yamaki's way better than Brock. Like, even now when he's being pretty crappy, he's still not that bad. Like, Yamaki is stalking children, but he's stalking children because, like, he knows they're involved with Digimon. He's not creeping on children. He's stalking them because he's just like, well, 
I work trying to make Digimon not show up, and these kids also have Digimon. And, like, to his credit, he also, despite being a shadowy government dude, like, has not tried to actually do anything except tell them, hey, could you maybe stop? He's just not good at things. Yeah, he basically, like, you know, they walk around the corner, he's just like, hey, kids, stay away from Digimon, and then runs off into the darkness. Like, that's what he does. That's still pretty creepy. <laughs> Yeah, but, like, once you know his motivation, it's less creepy. But we don't know that. Well, no, but we do, but the characters don't, because we know that he... We, he, we do know his job. We know his job, yeah, but it's still not great. <laughs> Either way, at least Brock didn't, like, actually entertain whatever her name was, Natalie's advances or something. Like, the small child's advances. Which, yeah, which is good. I'm glad he was made up comfortable. He deserved it. A taste of his own medicine, if you will. Yeah, but he won't learn from it. Oh, of course not. He's a Pokemon character. <laughs> Have we really never had a Pokemon character, like, learn and grow? No. A little bit Ash, kinda. But not since, like, episode 7. But Ash gets, like, reset every season. Yeah, it's very inconsistent. Sometimes characters will learn things and remember it in some episodes, but not others. That's mainly Ash that does that. I'm hoping that May will actually learn things and retain the knowledge. Which she seems to be doing so far, because, like, torture is getting more useful steadily. But yeah. Mon of the week. Who are we thinking? Renamon. Renamon. I was going to say Lotad, but that's just because I like Lotad a lot. I mean, Lotad was good too, but I think Renamon, uh, for me at least, really earned that top, start, the top spot. Okay, I've given it to Renamon. Uh, I'm just going to check if Renamon got it last week as well. Uh, no, it was Terrymon last week. That's fair. It does seem to be a toss-up between the Tamers partners, and that's it. Which is completely valid, because they are all good. And Yumon of the week... Julie. Ruki, for me. Yeah, I wrote down Rika as well. Like, Jerry's nice and cute, but so is Gilman. I feel like, yeah, like, Jerry was just kind of, you know, her usual friendly self, but Rika went through some stuff and was broody. Yeah. I have a soft spot for brooding characters. It's probably why I used to like Matt in the original adventure series. I mean, I'm here for it, to be honest. I think we're giving it to Rika then. Yeah. You know, this was a def- like a good episode because, like, well, not just a good episode, but a good, like, um... Renamon episode because like I barely remember Terrymon being in this. I know he was. Yeah, he taught Calamon Tai Chi and it was the cutest. Yeah, thing. and that was cute. But like, it's not like as much as a highlight as everything related to Renamon and Ruki and also Mimon. Yeah, Terrymon was quite subdued. He wasn't in it that much. Terrymon was barely around, and that's a shame. But you know, it happens sometimes. I think even we could use a break from Terrymon sometimes. Last thing then is to give it. We'll give them our ratings. So I gave Pokemon a 7 out of 10. Yeah, I gave it a 7 as well. Yeah, I'll give it a, a 7, I guess. It's fine. It was fine. Yeah, it was just pretty good. 7s all round, triple signs. And what about Digimon? 9. Going high? Okay. I can agree with a 9. Cool. I originally thought 9, but brought it down to an 8. That does make Digimon win. It has like 26 points to Pokemon's 21. And so the score's now 11-1 to Digimon. Pokemon is really not doing too great this se- season. Well, to be fair, Digimon's doing great. Yeah, Digimon's like lowest score has been a 19. I mean, it's just always been accepted as a good season of Digimon, and then I think the average season of Pokemon, in my opinion, is, is mostly kind of trash. I mean, po- I still enjoy Pokemon. It's a bit repetitive, but... Yeah, I just... I wish that... I wish that Pokemon had had, like, 40 episodes and a plot to it. I think that's that's kind of what they're doing with newer series more, so maybe it'll get better. I want the series to end. I want things that have an end date. I don't need to see Ash get a new face for the seventh time and still be ten. What I might do between episodes is look and see, like, if we can maybe trim down Pokemon to just not fill our episodes, and if that's still enough episodes. There is a website where you can filter all, like, anime seasons by, like, actual plot episodes. Hmm. I will look into it and consider it. Just because, like, with, what, 12 episodes in now? Or we've not got to the first gym. And, like, I don't want it to just be the same as last series where Pokemon just went on and on and on. The, the website is anime for the list. So we go advanced, advanced challenge, advanced battle, and battle frontier, and then on to Diamond and Pokemon. It's listing a lot of these as anime canon. That we've marked as filler. Yes, they are counting as canon if, like, a new move that Pokemon has never used before was used for the first time. Which, to me, just sounds wild. Yeah, like, we, we don't care to that level of detail. Have a look through and see, like, how many actual non-filler episodes there are. 
And if it's enough, then we might just trim it down. Because I honestly don't think we'll actually give Pokemon an advantage at all. No, I, I would definitely be glad to skip on to just the, the better episodes of Pokemon. It is a, a personal passion project, so like, if it needs to adapt to stay interesting for us, then we can do that. Definitely. Um, but yeah, that does give Digimon another point. And let's move on to the outro. Next time, we'll be discussing the 13th episodes. All Things Bright and Beautifly, and Juggernaut. If you want to talk about today's episodes, you can reach us on Twitter, via email, and in the Moncast Discord, and you can support the show via Patreon to gain access to the Moncast Uncut. As always, a big thank you to our patrons for supporting our episodes, Chisai236, Nicholas, Keith, and Fletchy42. Massive thank you as always to Quinn and May for joining me today. Where can the people find you? Uh, you kind of can't. I did finally go back to Twitter, so I guess there's that. But other than that, no. And me? Uh, on Lost in Translation Mon, primarily. We're on Twitter, YouTube, everywhere, basically. And you'll also find Quinn and Evie there, too. All the links are in the show notes. Thank you so much for listening, and until next time, bye-bye. Bye. 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 Just go can live you, with Impmon or something? Can you hear the random like, bird noise? That I, or is that just me? Uh, that's my mother down in the kitchen. No, 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 it's on my side. It's glass. Like, what? Oh, uh, then no. <laughs> I want to work out what it is. Okay, sorry, Are we all having auditory hallucinations? Yeah. <laughs> or at least you two. Anyway. No, I just was trying to interpret sounds that, that Air might have been hearing over the microphone that could potentially we- sound like bird. Are we just a bit tired? Because <laughs> it's not performing super great. Today. I am pretty tired today, if I'm being honest, and I will That's probably fair. be equally tired tomorrow when it's five in the damn morning. Because I'm so sorry. Apparently, I I love Digimon that much. I'm so sorry. I hope it's a good episode. <laughs> Me too. It'll just I'm be a be... short one. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna be a little mad at you if it's not. This is your fault. Yeah. You are personally responsible for I, okay. I, I wrote for it. how good the Digimon are. Air. Yeah, Come on. I, I wrote it. It's it's all my fault. Hello, this is Tentomon. Thank you for listening to the Moncast. Bye-bye!